let's switch our way from McDonald's and over to AI. Looking at the AI space, some strategies beyond some of the big obvious names in the computing and semiconductor space. We have more to talk about here. Ross Givens is with us, head trader and educator, Traders Agency. Good to see you. So the wave of the AI boom, how does it go? There's two waves, to explain. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on again, Nicole. And this is what we typically see in a hot area of the market. You know, you get the initial boom, right? Whether it was electric vehicles or solar, all these different themes that have been there over the last uh, couple of decades. But you get that first wave of the obvious place. And with AI, that was clearly semiconductors. You know, NVIDIA has been the stock of the last two years. Uh, uh, you know, Supermicro, all those obvious places, along with big tech, names like Google and others that can capitalize on that. But those play, those have kind of all played out. I mean, you got NVIDIA, I think, today now becoming the most valuable company in the world. Um, not exactly a great time to buy something like that. So you're a little late to it. But now we're seeing the second wave. And what I mean by second wave is kind of the backdoor plays into AI. And the big one, as you mentioned, I think is nuclear, because when you look at the challenges that AI faces, the big bottleneck is not compute. It is simply electricity. Um, right now, I think they're using something like, I want to say three or four percent of the nation's uh, electricity production. Analysts are saying it could be as high as 20 percent over the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, our grid can barely handle what we've got now. So there's just not enough power for the amount of juice these giant mega data centers are sucking. And so they're going to have to make their own. And, 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 you know, vertical integration makes the most sense, and nuclear is the only one that really fits the bill. So we're starting to see the rest of the market recognize that, and those, those key nuclear stocks are having just a heck of a month. The small nuclear stocks are what kind of names that we're talking about here? So one, probably my favorite is ticker symbol SMR, it's new scale power. Uh, SMR stands for small modular reactor. That's that's the nuclear technology we're talking about here, not the old you know three mile island giant plants, although that one's getting opened up too. The newer technology is these smaller kind of micro reactors or small reactors that are designed to power a single data center or a single, you know, small town, something like that. So SMR is one of them. Uh, nanonuclear, ticker NNE, is another one. Uh, and Oklo, O-K-L-O. Those are probably the top three uh, stocks that are small, you know, small to mid-cap nuclear providers that are going to benefit directly from this AI, you know, vertical energy in integration energy uh, deal with nuclear. Uh, yeah, and as you look at Oclo, Oclo, however you say, uh, you know, it's had an incredible run, right? It's up about yeah. 80% in a short period of time, year to date. Or how about how about one month? Uh, I guess that's what I was really looking for, uh, that short period of time with that big move. The one month is up 122%. Month to date, yeah. 136%. Yeah. Wow. They're moving. I mean, I've been talking about these for a few months. I hate that it, they, they've kind of taken off right. without us here. But, you know, this is what we see. It's like it, when something gets hot, you get, right. you know, first that kind of hype boom, and then it settles down. Then you get the, the, the right. fundamentals carrying them after that. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're on fire. But you like all these names Rob, for the long term, I guess. Um, what about the original wave? What did that include? NVIDIA and Google, you said? Yeah, I think NVIDIA was obviously the big one. You know, Super Micro Computer, SMCI, that was another popular one that also had a tenfold run. They make kind of a bolt-on application to essentially soup up uh, these data center computers to, to increase their compute. And then, of course, we got the piggyback move from, you know, Meta and Google and Microsoft and the big tech names that have the AI products. You had uh, AI, you know, C3.8 AI, the, the chat GPT owner. So all that kind of stuff. But the real, those are the real obvious plays. And I think most of those have gotten to valuations that don't make a ton of sense unless they really just execute flawlessly for the next decade. NVIDIA is the only one that really has some sales to back up uh, their crazy valuation. But even that one, I think, uh, uh, is, you know, getting a little long in the tooth. So you take a name like Aqua, you take a name like SMR, like, look, SMR went up 190 percent over the last two months, right? But it makes that big move, and then it's only pulled back like 15 percent. So we're still not seeing selling in there. I think this thing's still got some juice left in it and, uh, um, you know, kind of a lot further to go. 
Yeah, look, I mean, NVIDIA, the high is 144.42. The high today was just pennies away. It was 144 as well, but 144.13. So, I mean, it basically hit new highs again today and has yeah. been up uh, in a big way, up almost 200 percent, let's say 187 percent year to date. So it certainly has been an incredible player. Um, when you think about AI, I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on what's happening with Apple? We're having the big rollout now. Um, next week, we'll have the AI, Apple intelligence, summarizing our emails and our messages. It'll help us with our photos. There's going to be a lot within this. Are you impressed? Not really. I mean, look, I, those guys are a lot smarter than me. Don't take this the wrong way. But I mean, here we've got the most valuable tech company in the world, and they had to go rent their AI from ChatGPT. They had to recruit. I mean, it's like they're so behind. The company is just not innovating anymore. And you're sitting on a cash pile, you know, in the what, 12, I mean, I don't even know how many figures it is, but $100 billion. Like, do something with it. They should have been way ahead of this stuff. Now, Apple has a. Uh, reputation for not being the first one. You take, um, you know, media players, the, the, the cell phone, all these things. They were never the first. They perfected it first, then got it out. But they weren't even working on this stuff, at least not that, that we know of. So I think they're really behind the ball. They're going to spend a lot of money to play catch up. Um, I personally don't need AI summaries of a phone call I just had. I, I think a lot of this is going to be cute party tricks. But um, yeah, yeah it, it, a Apple to me is not the play for AI, not not at all. Yeah, you know it's funny because our guests earlier today in our panel was saying they're paying catch up with Samsung, Google, and Microsoft. I mean the writing tools, Siri, the clean up your photos and notifications seem cool, but that they were sort of in a catch up phase. Um, what am I leaving out about AI? I mean, do you trust Elon Musk and his AI visions? He's probably the only one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do. It's look, I'm not smart enough to even know how scared I should be of this stuff. I mean, it's it's light waves ahead of I think what most people can even comprehend. Even the people developing it don't know what it's going to do. So, you know, I hate to sound like a boomer on here, but, it, you know, it, there is some fear to that of what can happen. Um, obviously, big picture, I think our lives could improve a lot, just like happened with the Industrial Revolution and with the Internet and, you know, all these other big technologies that have come in. And, yeah, if we can train robots and tools to do the things we don't want to that frees up more time, makes us all wealthier. Uh, but, you know, I, I just don't see it happening as rapidly as, as everyone seems to think. I don't see the, um, you know, the acceptance by everybody so quick. I mean, there's still people that have, you know, flip phones, right? Do you think they're going to let AI, right. uh, you know, into their lives? I just, I don't know. I, I have a hard time seeing All that. right. Well, listen, there, we'll leave some of the stuff to the real pros on some of that, you know, the real scientists and such. But Ross Gibbons, a good look at some of these key trends that you're seeing, the waves and booms of AI overall, and some of those data center reads, nuclear, for example. Ross Gibbons, Traders Agency, thank you for joining us on the show today. Great to see you, Nicole.